Hi, this is Warner with Warner's Tree Surgery. I'm out in Sun City today, and I believe this leaf here uh, has been attacked by the leaf miner. There's other leaves that have obviously been. What I'm looking for are uh, leaves that have been attacked by the psyllids. Uh, these white ones, I believe, are damages from the ash fly, which is in the valley now, uh, and is in the citrus trees. And the reason I'm interested in which in citrus trees, or which insects are in uh, this particular citrus tree is because this one has the beginnings of dieback, uh, which in and of itself wouldn't be significant, but, however, exclamation point, the same thing has happened to the one limb on the neighbor's tree, to a large portion of this tree, and to this tree here. And this happened quickly. It started to show signs just when the summer came in, and then within a couple of weeks, uh, the whole tree died. And this is the fourth or fifth time I've seen that this year, and I've never seen it before in the valley. And I'm wondering if this is the HLB bacteria, which I, I strongly believe it is, but I, I don't have any real scientific proof yet. But the only thing I know of that would cause this rapid of a, of a tree death would be either, of course, no water, somebody dumping a bunch of chlorine or soft water on it, some sort of a chemical burn, which I've eliminated here. Uh, or the HLB or the citrus greening. And I don't see any signs of the insect that carries the citrus greening in any of the other citrus trees, and it's not supposed to to be here now anyway. So, you can see leaf miner activity has the leaf miner the ability to also carry a bacteria. I don't know. Nobody says it does, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't. It just means that they don't know for sure whether it does or not. And seeing as how it took them so long to even admit that the Asian citrus leaf miner was in the valley, I don't expect anybody to know that for sure for some time. But you can see in this tree, which doesn't have any dieback in it yet, that there are different insects. Some of them are known and obvious, like the leaf miner or the ash fly or the, the uh, rust or the, I don't see any aphids, but I believe, I'm going to have to double check, I'm going to believe that little curly Q leaf is what uh, the leaves look like when they're attacked by the psyllids. So I would expect if that were the case, to see a bunch of those leaves 
these leaves damaged, but there's no way to really tell because they're all they're all dead, so it's hard to hard to figure that out. But you can see uh, some of the leaves here that the part that hasn't quite died off yet. Uh, you can see the different insects that are in here, and one of them, I believe carried something over to this tree and introduced uh, a bacteria or a virus or something that nobody knows about yet into this tree which caused the rapid death. And again, I have seen this uh, this year only, but I have seen it uh, on a few occasions. So that's about it. Um, this is Warner with Warner's Tree Surgery. If you've got any problems with your citrus trees, uh, even though there's not much I can do about this, we are trying to do stuff to protect the others. Uh, give me a call. The number is 480-969-8808. Thank you very much. In order to understand what is happening to most citrus trees in Maricopa County, you must first understand the relationship between stored reserve energy and insect damage to the leaves. Leaves produce energy in the form of sugars, starches, oils, and proteins, and they store that energy in the tree's storage network. If a citrus tree has enough stored energy, it can do all the things that have allowed them to survive despite the many diseases that are carried by antimicrobial agents carried by insects. Usually all insects that live off of citrus trees have another insect nearby that will eat them. So if your tree becomes infected with one kind of bug in a year or two another bug will have moved in and ate them well before the reserves of the tree are seriously depleted and a balance is maintained. The reason we're in trouble now is because a bug has moved in to Arizona from halfway around the world and there are no bugs here that like to eat it. Arriving in 2011 and having no natural predator in Arizona and breeding up to 14 times a year the Asian citrus leaf miner has been in almost every citrus tree I have looked at now for several years. Today is October 5, 2017, so the population has grown unchecked for at least six years, and the leaves on your citrus tree have been producing far less energy than normal. Because of this, the reserve cells are dangerously low, biologically speaking. Your citrus trees have run out of gas. When reserves are low, a citrus tree is more vulnerable to insect damage, soil fungus, frost damage, heat stress, sunburn, water stress, plus they can't defend themselves against other insects very well. This has caused the other insect populations to grow, which has accelerated the depletion of stored energy in your citrus trees. To deal with this situation, you need to correct any issues with insects, watering, fertilization, and trimming. In a little bit, I'm going to teach you how to spray for the insects. But first, we have to take a little bit of time and learn how to identify the different insects or the effects that they have so that when they you'll know when they return because you're going to spray to get rid of them but 
they're going to come back from somebody else's tree sooner or later. So on my website at warnerstreesurgery.com, I have a number of videos that I've made that deal with the pests that infect citrus trees. We've got them on ants, the psyllid, the leaf miner, uh, the thorps, the rust mites, the fruit flies, most of the insects that you will see on your citrus tree are going to be listed here. Now you don't need to learn their names or anything like that, but what you do need to understand is that, for instance with the aphids, they're going to cause the leaves to be deformed, and this is what you're probably going to notice. Uh, with the aphids, you might even see the aphids, and this is a picture of, of what they look like on a citrus tree. But when they're gone, uh, you're still going to be able to see that the leaves are deformed. And the idea is that um, the leaf miner, for instance, has this easily... Hello, my name is Pat, and I'm Shut her off. Uh, you might watch this video on the Asian citrus leaf miner, but um, it's a good video. But the point I'm making is you're going to see a, a discoloration of the leaves with the Asian citrus leaf miner. You'll probably never see the moth. When she's full grown, she's just a speck and she hides in the daytime. So you don't need to learn the names of the, of the different pests. But what you do need to learn is to spot the leaves when something has uh, made them look strange. Okay, uh, let's see if I can, the bud mites are a good one. If you, if you look at these leaves here and see how they're deformed, you don't see the bud mites because they're so small you'll probably never see them, but you see the leaves deformed. And the idea is, is that when the leaves don't look normal, it's almost always because of an insect. And that's how you're going to know that the insects have come back to the tree, is you're going to get rid of them for a while. And when they come back, you're going to have to spray for them again. So these videos on my website will aid you in familiarizing yourself with what the different insects will do to the leaves. Um, so that's about it for that part. Now how to get rid of the bugs. What I recommend is using a product called Organicide 3-in-1. It's basically sesame seed oil. It's food. You can spray your kids and your dogs with it if you want to. It won't hurt anything. It won't hurt the fruit. It won't hurt you. It, it's just harmless. Uh, the sprayer that I recommend you use is called a uh, Chapin sprayer. And you can get the Chapin sprayer either from Home Depot online or on Amazon. Now, after you use the organicide, you put the organicide in the chap and sprayer, you spray the trees, and then you put what you don't use back in the organicide bottle. You fill the sprayer about halfway up with water, and you spray it out. And then you take it inside, and you wash it with warm water. If you don't do that, you're going to be buying a new sprayer uh, once a week. The Organicide will clog up the sprayer if you leave it set for a day or two. Now, because the because it's an oil, it doesn't kill the hard-bodied insects. What that means is it will not kill the adult moth. But the moth only lives for three weeks, and it will kill the eggs. It'll kill the caterpillars. It'll coat the leaves so she won't lay her eggs on it. And if you spray it for three weeks, seven days apart, 
you will prevent the moth from laying eggs. She only lives three weeks. She'll be dead. All the other bugs will be smothered and it works very well, but you have to spray it the three times. They've got sprays out there that you only have to spray once. They're very toxic, even though they say they're not. And if your tree is any size at all, you're going to be spraying and you're going to get this stuff back on you. So you spray, use the organicide, it won't hurt you. You want to spray immediately if you can, as long as the temperature is 85 degrees or less. If uh, it's too hot, there's another option that I'll go in at the end of this video. But um, if you spray in the mornings when it's cool, uh, maybe you won't be able to spray in the summertime, but you will be able to spray in October. You can spray in November. You want to spray every January, whether you see bugs or not. After the January spraying, you're going to have your tree free of, blood, of bugs. The leaves are going to fall off. And then you're going to be able to tell by looking at the leaves whether you need to spray again. If you notice deformed leaves, you need to spray again. If you don't want to mess with all that, then just spray in January, spray in April, spray in November. Each one of those times, you'll be doing it three times seven days apart. You want to coat the leaves as well as you can with water. This sprayer will get to the top of almost any citrus tree. And uh, let's see, what else? If you spray and five minutes later it rains, you're still good. But if you happen to get any of the spray on windows or anything like that, you want to wash it off right away. After it hardens, it's, it's kind of hard to get off. So that's about it for the spraying. Okay, here's the other option I was talking about. Now, you can put this down, the Bare Advanced Fruit and Citrus, and the problem with this product is that you can only do it once a year, but it doesn't work all year long. But, if you had a real bad case of something, and uh, the 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 other product, the organicide, you can't spray when it's uh, over 85 degrees. So that takes care of most of the summer here. So if you had a real bad problem for the first year to get things under control, you could put this product down in May, and you wouldn't be able to do it again for another May, but it would quit working probably in October or November, and then you could go back to the spring. So, just so you'll know, this will introduce a poison into your fruit. It's a common poison that's probably in most of the fruit we eat if we don't eat organic. Um, but again, because it's made for edible plants, it doesn't work all year long, but, it, but you can only put it down once a year or you get too much poison in the plant. Uh, and so, you know, if you think it would work for you in the summertime and you don't mind putting poison into your citrus, then that's an option to consider. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is how much to water citrus trees. And everybody that I talk to almost without fail is really surprised uh, when they learn how much water a citrus tree really needs. Now, if you go to my website, warnerstreesurgery.com, there's a section on how much to water. Um, there's a video that lays out uh, the whole thing that's on this page, which I'm not going to get into, but you might want to look at that. It goes over the basics of a drip irrigation system and how to keep it up. Not that you're going to do it yourself, but it, you need to know how to do that because probably the person you hire to do that is going to do it wrong. Then as you go down, there's 
a little section on how much water queen palms need because again they're really underwatered and there is uh, a handout that all the cities have put out that tells you how much to uh, to water everything else and then finally there is a PDF on uh, irrigating citrus trees that is put out by the Cooperative Extension. Okay? And if you download this, it will first give you information on how to spot when trees need more water at a glance and then you'll get to this chart which will give you gallons per day per size of the tree per month of the year. Now most citrus trees that are any size are at least 12 foot in diameter and in July a 12 foot diameter citrus tree will take about 22 gallons a day. So if you're going to do that every three days, you're going to have to put 60 to 65 gallons of water on that, which is way more than probably most people are watering the citrus. Now, these are good numbers. We have been using these numbers uh, for growing citrus here in the valley for a hundred years. trees, But most people when they set up their citrus they put the the little drips on and they aren't getting nearly enough water uh, in the summertime. In the winter they don't need much. The same tree that needs 30 gallons in July is only going to need four gallons in December. So it really goes down as soon as we get out of the out of the summer which is uh, May to September here um, but the way that you have to do this is you have to actually determine how much water is coming out of your drip irrigation or your bubblers or however you got it set up and the only way to really do that is to measure it so you measure how much is coming out how long it takes to fill up a cup or a quart or whatever and then you do the math and if you're watering once a week or once twice a week or whatever then you've got to adjust it appropriately so they're getting enough water. Now further down in this it gives you different scenarios uh, for watering your citrus trees. Uh, the only way we do, you would do it 14 days once every 14 days as if you were in an orchard and you could get a couple of feet of water. Most people are doing it every two to five days. But anyway, this PDF file that you download will explain all of that to you. And then you will know how much water your citrus tree needs. The fertilizer I recommend that you use is Kellogg's Organic Plus. You can get it at Home Depot it's got a special fungus in it called mycorrhizal fungi which will bind to the roots and create a barrier between the roots and the harmful soil fungus. Um, it's the best fertilizer that I know of that you can buy easily and when your trees are in distress it's important that you do everything that you can uh, the best that you can. As far as trimming goes, except for lemons, the citrus need very little trimming. You do need to trim the, any suckers that grow from the rootstock, which, is, which means anything that grows a foot or two uh, down from the ground, uh, you should cut off. But other than that, they hardly need to be trimmed at all. If you want to deadwood them, the goal should be to uh, just get a pile of dead wood with with no green leaves. Um, once they're healthy, it's all right to lightly thin them out every three or four years.
but you should, you should avoid that because until the reserves are stocked up, every green leaf is going to help the problem that they have. Now the exception to that are the lemon trees, which if you don't trim yearly, they'll break under their own weight. So for the lemon trees, you just need to kind of look at it like an engineer and decide which of the limbs are going to get so heavy they would break and then you want to cut those back and maybe or top them down a little bit. But again, you don't want to uh, do much trimming. If you expose the bark to sun, you need to paint it. And you should paint it with a white exterior house paint. Uh, if you use the white exterior house paint, the the paint will last for 15 or 20 years. If you use that tree paint that they sell, that's made for trees like ash or something like that to where it wants to fade and it will fade in three or four years and you'll be painting it again. And if you get tricked into buying the the paint that looks like the color of the bark of the tree, uh, here in Arizona that won't reflect the sun back and the, the trees will get a lot hotter than they would if you just painted them with white paint. So if you get everything right, if you get the watering right, you get rid of the bugs, you get the fertilizing right, and you don't mess up with the trimming, uh, your trees are going to do a lot better. What we do, in addition to this, is we inject a product into the tree that will kind of kickstart the energy production. We do it when we come out to visit you, and we do it a second time three months later. Everything else you need to do to get your citrus the way they should be is up to you. So this is Warner with Warner's Tree Surgery. Uh, I hope this is useful to you. Um, if you got any questions, give us a call. The number is 480-969-8808. Thank you very much.